Welcome to the Thrive by Design podcast, our video edition. I am so excited to be here today to talk about how to polarize to magnetize your audience when it comes to branding. I have a very special guest on the show today. And before I introduce him, I just want to say, hey, I'm Tracy Matthews. I'm the Chief Visionary Officer over at Flourish and Thrive Academy and the host of the Thrive by Design podcast. If you haven't subscribed to Thrive by Design, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts over at flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash Apple. And, uh, or you can just listen to it on our blog. You can check this episode out over at flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash episode 240. Um, anyway, I have a very special episode for you today. You know, we all know branding is important for jewelry designers and for makers. And in order to really create desire and demand for your jewelry, you really need to be polarizing and you need to understand how to use branding uh, in everything that you do to connect not only with your ideal audience or your dream clients, as we like to say, but also keep bringing those thousand true fans that tr thousand true fan base that you're trying to build on for the long haul. Uh, we just released a book. It is called Your Brand is Gay, Even If You're Not. It is an amazing book that you definitely must pick up. I'm gonna give you some links in the show notes of where you can find it. Uh, you definitely wanna pick it up because you're gonna learn so much about branding and how to just make probably some simple tweaks to the things that you're doing to really call out and connect with your dream clients. My guest on the show today is Ree Perez. He's a very good friend of mine and a branding expert, and he's pretty amazing. He is a brand strategist, an international speaker, the author and CEO of Branding for the People, which is a leading branding agency that builds and manages brands for funded startups, expanding small businesses and established mid-sized companies around the globe. Ree is the guy to go to if you want to create an iconic brand that makes a positive impact on the world. And you're gonna see in this interview today how amazing Re is. So make sure that you check it out and let's do this. One of the biggest topics that we always have on the podcast is uh, talking about branding and the confusion around what branding is. And I'm very excited today to have my good friend on the show today, Re Perez. Thanks so much for being here. Excited to be here, thanks for having me. I just got to see you in Austin. We had so much fun bonding and catching up. And I'm really more excited than anything because you have a new book coming out. Tell us a little bit about the book. Well, actually, we're going to talk about the book later, but I love the title, so I don't even want to give it away yet. <laughs> <laughs> Can we give it away in the beginning? I don't know. Um, but I'm excited to have you because you are like legit a branding genius. And I've been watching you for many years. We, yeah. we met in a business mastermind, I think maybe two years ago in Croatia. And uh, we've got to spend a lot of time with our friends together in Austin. And I'm excited to have you here to talk a little bit more about branding and your journey and why branding is so important. So why don't we start a little bit more? Why don't you give us a little bit of, about your background and why you love branding so much? Yeah, so it's interesting. Um... I think where it really started to cement for me, I was working at one of the top branding firms uh, in New York, and I was uh, wondering why was I getting passed up for uh, the next level in my career, right? Like I'm smart, I'm committed, I'm dedicated. And uh, the global HR director said that I didn't have enough gray hair, which means I didn't look, I didn't look old enough. <laughs> And if you know anything about human resources, that's probably one of the most illegal things that you could possibly <laughs> say, right? That is hilarious. <laughs> you don't really have gray hair, even though we're yeah. close to the same age. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll call it Filipino genes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've been blessed to actually not have that problem with, with gray hair or white hair. So I sort of dubbed this as sort of the gray ceiling. And that was, you know, you've all heard of the glass ceiling. So I sort of dubbed this as the gray ceiling. That was like, there was a ceiling for me in this company in a position that I really wanted in an industry that I loved. And um, that's when it sort of hit me that perception really is everything. Like how people perceive you, like how you look, how you talk, how you act, all of that creates a perception in people's minds and you want to have the right perception in order to create the opportunities that you want. So it can either, you know, uh, um, 
alter what the opportunities are, are available to you, or it can actually promote it. And so that's how I sort of define brand and branding. Branding is about creating a perception in the marketplace. Ostensibly, it's the desired perception that you want that accurately reflects and authentically reflects who you are as a person, whether you're a personal brand or as a business, if you're a company brand. And so that's why, you know, that's why it's important to me. It's like, I think my whole life uh, and my whole journey has been sort of being comfortable with who I am and being perceived for exactly who I am and not, not being apologetic for it, not even being apologetic for not having gray hair or <laughs> not looking old enough, right? So I really do, I wanted to turn that, the power of perception into a meaningful and a profound way with businesses. And now I work with like lots of entrepreneurs and small business owners. How can they create a perception that helps them to attract their ideal clients, that helps them to uncover those opportunities that they wouldn't have been able to uncover and, and to grow and, and expand their reach and their impact? Well, I, I love that um, because there's so many ways that you can relate this across all industries. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the people that I mentor are really jewelry designers and makers and people with product based businesses. So, how do you, like, how would you uh, talk about? branding with someone with a physical product like how do you what is there any nuances or differences with that oh yeah well so branding is branding it's the same in fact one of the examples that i i like to give is the um the story of an 18 karat gold pair of earrings right <clears throat> so a professor at the kellogg school of management asked a group of students how much would they pay for this 18 karat gold pair of earrings and it was not branded and uh, the answer was something like $550. Mm -hmm. And then he asked the second group of students, how much would they pay for the same exact pair of earrings, but it was branded Tiffany. And what happened, it increased about 80% to like $673. I forget the exact number, right? Um, but where it gets even more interesting is he asked a third group of students, how much would they pay for the same exact pair of earrings? except it was branded Walmart. <laughs> and oh, what happened, God. it decreased about 85 to like $85. It increased significantly to $85. So from $550 unbranded to $673 for Tiffany to $85 Walmart. And so it's the same exact pair of earrings. The brand is what dictates and influences what people are willing to pay for the same product. So it definitely applies whether it's at the company level, at the personal brand level, at the service level, and also at the product level. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's super clear that you're really passionate about branding and we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah. the other thing I want to talk about is like, what, like <laughs> one of the things that I like to talk about with our designers is really increasing perceived value. So from a branding perspective, mm -hmm. How do you see like brands being able to increase the perceived value so that they can command like Tiffany price points? Yeah, so the and one thing, one distinction I wanna clarify is that, I, and I believe that branding should really not only create a perceived value, but should actually deliver on that value. <laughs> because then if you're not doing that, one, that's inauthentic. And two, now you're just talking about manipulative advertising and manipulative marketing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in my mind, like the authenticity of a brand to creating perceived value should certainly match that of the real value that they're providing. Now, more specifically to answer your question, I think uh, really understanding your target audiences in terms of the problems that you're solving for them, mm -hmm. they could either be functional problems they could be like in terms of like helping me, you know, whatever the function or utility of the product does in that person's life, that's a, your, that product is solving a functional problem. Or it could be solving an economic problem, whether it, uh, and economic is measured in terms of time or money. And, um, and then the last type of problem that it can solve is a, an emotional problem. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of times products, whether it's jewelry or fashion or, you know, clothing or anything along those sort of consumer type brands, 
but also even like B2B brands. Uh, it's about solving an emotional problem. How does the product service or company or brand make people feel, you know, or how does it solve their emotional problems, whether it's, you know, having an identity, you know, no one buys a Louis Vuitton purse because they need one. <laughs> they no. buy, they're buying an identity. They're buying the way it makes them feel. They're buying that most likely because it creates a signals, a sense of status, you know, solving an emotional problem. So that, that's how I relate to sort of uh, any kind of brand, like creating perceived value is when you're trying to increase the perceived value and the true value is solve people's problems, simply put. Yeah, we just did a masterclass about this. Our methodology over at Flourish and Thrive is called the desire brand effect. Okay. And uh, basically that's the outcome of when you do all the things right, right? That's right. And uh, we use an example of luxury handbags because like, the top category for all uh, couture designers is their handbags. Like they, right. that's what they sell the most at. That's where they're really running their businesses on. Yeah. The reason why people spend a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, forty thousand dollars on a handbag if it's like a Birkin bag, is because they know number one, there's uh, limited edition and scarcity. Yep. It might be one of the select few who get it. It offers a sense of status. Yeah. If you're getting like a Birkin bag, like there are very few even made in like. If you have the kind of money where you can spend twenty to forty thousand dollars on a bag like that, that's like, you know, you're that really says like, something about you, yeah, right? It but, says something yeah. about you, and people want people who are carrying those things want other people to know it. And so, right. if you can create that sort of um, maybe brand recognition, but you can make create that kind of feeling, whatever it is that you want your people to feel, uh, yeah. emulate sort of like what some of these luxury handbag lines are doing. You know, you've created something that sticks with your customers. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And when I I'll just on that last point with when I say about creating, I say solving an emotional problem. That's how I framed it. But really yeah. what you're doing is you're creating an emotional connection yeah. with your audiences. And when you create an emotional connection, that's using the word that you just said is like, that's where it sticks. That's where the relationship sticks. Um, as opposed to just, uh, you know, a commodity where you're like, all right, I just paid for this and whatever there, you're not emotionally attached to it, but when you're emotionally attached to something, you know, and it creates it and it supports enhances or elevates your identity, then, then yeah, you have that, that sticky factor. You have that, uh, that bond and that relationship with a brand and your customer. Yeah, that's so true. So I'm curious what are some of the common misconceptions that people have about branding? Like where are they getting it wrong and how do you kind of evolve from that? Yeah. Well, you know, sort of my background, I've, I, I worked with a lot of the, the big brands. Right. And so coming from that world, when I started to work with entrepreneurs and small business owners, and in some cases, some mid-sized companies, mm -hmm. usually when they hear branding, uh, some of the common misconceptions or the common mistakes is that they think that their brand is their logo mm -hmm. or they think their yeah. brand is about uh, their website or their name or, or their marketing activities. And it's not that we don't need those things. In fact, we need all of those things. They're important in creating a brand, but where the biggest mistake is, is like, okay, before you actually create that logo, before you actually go to market or before you create that website, you should really get clear on what is your brand stand for? What is the, what is your point of view? What is your ethos, your philosophy? What are your values? And because remember we talked about identity earlier, brands that connect with their consumers, you're really, you're really connecting with them on the level of the, your values and your ethos. And so when you're not clear on what your brand stands for and what it believes in, you know, at best you're just creating, a, you know, some pretty designs and hopefully it'll connect with your target audiences. That's, so that's one big one is just, is just on a philosophical level, level, not understanding what branding is and, and what it's not. And, and to make it a little bit more tactical is one of the biggest mistakes is not getting clear on the target audience. So just because I might like a certain kind of design or branding or even the name, whatever, it may not matter to the target audience. Yeah. 
So branding is always sort of like an outside in approach. Like who are we trying to appeal to? And let's create a brand for those people. Does that make sense? Yes, a hundred percent. And I loved every, I was taking a ton of notes. <laughs> Something that's super cool. So, you know, we've, uh, what we teach over at Flourish and Thrive Academy. And uh, what I talk about this all the time on the Thrive by Design podcast is all about this desire brand effect methodology, which we've dialed down to like a core, a cornerstone, um, basically branding document, as you will, yeah. call what we call the desire brand effect. And it covers all these things. You know, it's like, yeah. you can't really create your messaging and your branding and like really start connecting with your dream clients or whatever you want to call them until you under really know what you stand for and like how, what right. that intersection is and what the, uh, the people who would most want to buy from you. That's right. Want. And That's so right. when you can clearly define those things, it becomes like so much easier to sell because like you're only speaking to a small group of people. And when you can call it out, they think like to themselves, like, Oh, that's so me. This brand is for me. Right. That's and right. I want to buy everything. So I love it that you said all that. I was like, writing it down. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. So yes, it makes it easier for people. It makes it easier for brand businesses and brand owners to sell because it makes it easier for the customer to buy. You yeah. make it easier for the customer to say yes or no to your product. You're like, Oh, that's totally me. Or that's not me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be, pol you want to be polarizing. You want to be polarizing. So you used the example of Tiffany earlier. And it's so funny because, well, whenever you've met my, my boyfriend, Jason, but people ask me this, like anytime I've ever dated someone or whatever, they're like, what are you going to do when it's time uh, for you to get like, if you ever wanted to get married again, like how would someone pick out a ring for you? Cause I design engagement rings and wedding bands. And yeah, um, it's funny to have that conversation uh, because Oh. A lot of this goes through like gift giving of like what a guy would buy a girl. And I had this mm -hmm. conversation with Jason about, you know, certain people love Tiffany, but like that to me is like not a brand that I connect with at all because I feel like it's something that everyone has. And that's not something that I value. Like yeah. I value individuality and things that are unique. And yes. so when people ask me like, what would you want for a ring? I'm like, I don't even know because I haven't thought about it that much, but I definitely know that I don't want something that anyone else has. Right. So if right. that means like, you know, you going to find someone to do it or something like that, it becomes an alignment with what I value most. And that's how I'm going to like, how that decision would be made. And that's so true. other people like really want to have the Tiffany piece of jewelry because to them, it says like, oh, I can afford Tiffany. And now right. I'm in with a cool crowd. Right. That's right. And so the, the, I couldn't have uh, expressed it so much better, but that was just a perfect example. It's like you value individuality over being accepted into the cool crowd of those who can afford Tiffany. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's the power of branding. And that's why I said it really is about connecting with your, with your customers uh, around your values and what you stand for and, and your personality characteristics, right? Totally. Now, um, I didn't ask you this question earlier and I probably shouldn't have, should have, but like, uh, if you haven't totally covered it yet, like why, how'd you get like, super into branding and why are you so passionate about it <laughs> besides well, the, you know hr telling you that you're not old enough or whatever you know i think for me it's always been um i just i've always been different i've always been the odd person like in any group no matter what group i'm in and so if anything it sort of created a level of like awareness of me being different and then trying to like understand how can i uh be accepted um, or, or quote unquote fit in, and I'll qualify that in a second, but how can I be part of different groups and still be me, right? So not so much like conforming for any particular group, but being able to coexist yeah. with different groups. And so for me, I just think that there's like this whole art and science around creating a perception mm -hmm. that that is true to you, but that also allows you to connect with with other people. You know, I think that's probably why it is a bit more because you know, like there's countless stories. I think for me, growing up, where I was like, "Wow, I'm different," and how can I turn this into a great thing rather than it being sort of like uh, 
you know, a barrier for me connecting with people. You know, what's so interesting is as children, like we try so hard to fit in and as adults, like individuality is like sometimes like such a core value. So if we, we can like foster that in children, like to embrace yeah. like their individuality or their personal brand, then that becomes like the fat fiber of like what they stand yeah. for and who they are. Right. Which you are just like such an incredible person. So I just, yeah. so smart <laughs> branding and everything. I mean, I just, you know, all the things that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you have a book and I'm so excited about it. Yeah. Because I remember sitting with you at one of our, uh, in this business group that we're in, Baby Bathwater, and sitting next to you, you're like, oh yeah, here's the name of my book. And then you like tweaked it a little bit, even since then. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about the book, what you cover. Uh, I'm really excited to support you in this launch because I, I know it's like epic. All the Thank time. you. Well, I appreciate that. Well, you know, interestingly, earlier, you sort of teed it up really well. Earlier, you had said, you know, brands should be polarizing, right? And so we're on video, right? So I'll kind of like, I'll show the book. So the book is, your brand should be gay, even if you're not. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the subtitle is, you know, it's the art and science of creating an authentic brand. And so if you think about it, uh, what I'm doing here, what this moment is, is like sort of teaching about the power of branding through the title of my book, right? And so there's a million things that I, I mean, there's many different interpretations of what that book really means. People might be triggered by, by certain terms, like they might be triggered by the word gay, they might be inspired by it, they might get it, they might love it. And so that's what a brand does. One, it's sort of like, wait a minute, why should my brand be gay? <laughs> you know, so it, one, it piques curiosity. That's yeah. what a good brand does, it piques curiosity. And two, it's polarizing. You're like, oh, no, I don't associate with that term gay. And I could have been meaning happy, but uh, I didn't associate with that term gay or like, oh yeah, I totally, am, I totally get it. And so again, it cr creates a polarizing effect. And then three, it propels people, a great brand's, propel people to take action. So, I mean, even if you think about it, like how many pink covered books do you see out in the bookstore, right? So if anything, it's like interrupting people's uh, uh, of uh, typical sort of programming mm -hmm. and it propels them to take action be like, and stop in their tracks and be like, yeah, hey, this is different. And, and that's, what I, that's what I believe all branding should do is to create that type of energetic uh, uh, of, um, of appeal, if you will, yep. because that, you know, we're, we're bombarded with so much marketing, so much media, so much information. We're caught up in our own, you know, uh, uh, you know um, patterns and routines mm -hmm. that if you really want to survive and you really want to thrive and you really want to, to really be seen and be noticed, you want to create a brand, you know, it doesn't matter how great your product is. If no one sees you, it doesn't matter. Exactly. That's the that power is true. If no one sees you, it doesn't matter. You need to get out there. So polarize the heck out of it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to um, be sending this out to a bunch of our SOS students. It's going to be amazing. So <laughs> what is something uh, you want people who aren't familiar with branding to know about it right now as we okay. kind of like wrap up this episode. Yeah. So what I want people to know about branding is that um, it's, it's, it's not a one and done activity. Branding in my view, it's a way of being, <laughs> it's a lifestyle. It's a mindset. It is, a, it's, it's an approach to how you show up in your business, uh, with your customers or clients, uh, with your internal team, right? It informs, it sort of be creates like this, uh, this beacon of light uh, that guides all of your decision-making, you know, and, and a lot of the term, like some of the terms I like to use is that oftentimes when you get clear on your brand, you're, you're able to move through the spaces of, of running a business or interacting with customers because you're making decisions based on whether it's on brand 
or it's off brand. And that's a very powerful way to be able to use that as a deciding factor. Like, oh, this is totally in support of my brand or like this is totally against my brand. And uh, that, that enables people to, to, to be able to, to be more successful, to be more clear, to have less overwhelm and, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, a lot of times I can talk about the tangible benefits of like helps you make more money and all that sort of stuff. But there's also the intangible benefits, which is a sense of pride, a sense of confidence, and a sense of knowing that what you're putting out there in the world is authentic to you. So that's what I want people to know. It's, it's more than just logos and pretty colors and websites. It, it's, it's a way of life. I love that. Re, thank you so much for being here. Where can everyone buy your book and uh, read this amazing uh gem of a, a publication <laughs> you. that you put out. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. It should be pretty easy. It's just your brand should be gay.com. Okay. <laughs> your brand should be gay.com. And you can find all the options, whether you want to buy it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or what have you. So um, yeah, go check that out. If you're called to do it and you want to learn more about the power of branding and how it can impact your, your, uh, your business and your relationship with your customers. Awesome. Reed, thank you so much for being here. We'll have the links for everything over in the show notes as well. Um, you're amazing. Thank you, Tracy. I'll look forward to speaking soon. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for listening and watching this episode. If you're watching the video version, make sure that you head on over to yourbrandshouldbegay.com to pick up your copy of Reed's book. It is amazing. You don't want to miss this. And if you are looking to get our eyes on your business and you'd like help growing and scaling and kind of overcoming those profit plateaus that you might be hitting in your business, I'd love to invite you to an SOS exploration call. It is a free strategy call with our business accelerator specialist that is designed to help you get unstuck and move forward with what we call the desired brand effect. Now we have a program over here at Flourish and Thrive Academy called SOS. The entire program is developed around these 90 day strategic plans. Now, after working with thousands of designers over the years, I know that one of the main things or one of the key reasons why um, jewelry designers and makers get stuck is that they don't set aside time to actually map out a strategic plan and implement that strategic plan in their business. So instead of uh, setting goals and creating milestones and markers to actually go after those goals, basically what they do is they just like, you know, wing it and hope for the best. But what ends up happening is that they don't know what they're doing wrong because they, they can't figure it out. They just keep spinning their wheels. And even though maybe they're ambitious and getting to a certain point in business, they haven't really figured out that thing that is going to move the needle or get them unstuck. So if you're someone who's feeling overwhelmed, you've built a business to a certain uh, point, but you feel like you're stuck kind of in a profit plateau and you're ready to make big results this year, I'd love to invite you to jump on a call with Natasha, head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash SOS now and book your free strategy session. You can apply right there. We're going to ask you to fill out an application. And if you're accepted, you'll uh, be invited to book a call with Natasha. It's pretty amazing. So let's do this. Head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash SOS now to book your free strategy session now. Yeah.